And I know everybody wants to blame Ten Hag, sack Ten Hag, sack Ten Hag, sack Ten Hag, sack Ten Hag. I'm going to give you reasons why um, we shouldn't sack Ten Hag. Just keep on watching this video. I'll tell you why Ten Hag, sacking Ten Hag will be a very, very bad thing to do and why we, should, we need to focus more on the players than on uh, Ten Hag, which makes more sense in my own opinion. But we were 3-0 up. We gave it away 3-3. And then um, um, during the extra time, we, we, we tried to get a win. It didn't happen. Went to penalties and we got the win. Very good. It's going to be a, um, a Manchester derby in the FA Cup final. And um, we are going to be in the FA Cup final for two seasons in a row under Ten Hag, which is very, very good. But these players are continuing to show us that they are not up to the standard. Um, because against Chelsea, against Liverpool, we keep on doing the same thing, the same thing, even against a championship team who we are meant to be brushing away. Fine, it's the FA Cup. It's a game of football. Anything can happen. But... Against Coventry, we are meant to beat that. That, that 3-0 was meant to be the was meant to be the um, the final score and also qualifying at 3-0. Very fantastic. But you get these players playing so badly. And how is that everything Hag's fault? How is he his fault? These same players under him got to 3-0. These are professionals. These are players that earn millions of um, of pounds yearly. And you uh, you expect Ten Hag to you know play to coach them and still enter the pitch and still play the football for them. Fine, he took up some. Fine, his substitution, his substitutions were were questionable. But the players who is putting on are still professionals. They are still they are still players that have been playing for years. They are still players that are, that are meant to be professionals. And then you complain that oh, you move this person, you put this person on. The person who you put on is, is the person not a footballer. Is that person not good enough to um, play in a team that should be able to beat a cup, a, a championship team? I don't, I don't get it. I definitely agree. Some of his substitutions are questionable. But the players who is taking off and who is putting on. Are they not meant to be Manchester Manchester United players and players that will come in and do 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 uh, play a game for us? We have a game against um who are we playing? I forgot, who, who do, we have a game on Thursday or on Wednesday, and he's after uh, we are three zero up. He's taking off some players, which is very, which is, which he was meant to do. We are three zero up against the, against the championship team. What do you expect? What do you expect him to do? To continue playing his full strength squad. No, he takes some, makes some substitutions and continue and the game. And yeah, the players who are left on, you know, they keep on disgracing us, frustrating the fans and not playing for the badge. It's very obvious that these players, either most of, most of them are playing for the badge and I'm not going to mention any names. Most of them are playing for, many of, few of them rather are playing for the badge. Many of them don't really care and many of them probably want the manager to get sacked and uh, they don't really care about the um, the fans or, or any other thing because if you're not playing for the badge, it means you don't care about the fans and we are the fans. We are the one to, um, we have people waking up by in the mid, during midnight in their own time. People, um, leaving work to watch these games. People, you know, sacrifice, making little sacrifice, sacrifices because we are diehard fans of the club and we want to see our club, um, do well. And you get these players who are being paid millions of um, pounds, you know, playing rubbish, which is very, very disappointing to see. But what can we do? But, it's time to focus on these players. These players need to be sold. And um, apart from the fact that Ten Hag has some questions over his head, but the thing is, if the focus is on Ten Hag, even if we sack Ten Hag, for example, today, and a new manager comes in, he will want to give every of these players second chances because the manager is not like us that know that most of these players yeah, need to go. He's not like us. We have been watching them for years and we know players that need to go and the one that we can keep. But a new manager is going to come in and be like, okay, I want... To give these players, you know, some time for me to watch them. That's probably going to give them a whole season or half a season to watch these players and see who he wants to stay and who he wants to leave. But Tenag has been here for years. So Tenag knows exactly who he wants to go. Last season, Tenag wanted to sell Maguire, wanted to sell McTominay and some other players, but the club couldn't do that. Um, if we had sold those players, we'll have gotten... I agree, Mag Maguire and McTominay has been, has been working very good for us this season. But if he had sold these two players, we'll have gotten Kim min for example. We'll have gotten Rabiu. We'll have gotten... So, um, very good replacement for both of them that can do a job for a very long time, um, at the club. Fine. Maguire is playing very well. McTominay has caught very important goals for us, but we know that at the end of the day, these players are still some of the players that we want, um, to sell. Maguire and McTominay do not fit our system and they need to go, even though they have been doing it for all this season. So even if, if we have sold them last season, we would have gotten players who fit this system and who, who are going to be here for years, but we didn't do that. So I've been focusing on, um, um, Ten Hag, Ten Hag, Ten Hag, Ten Hag, Ten Hag. If this, if Tahang is remain, is um, kept as a manager, um, this season, during the summer, I'm very sure he knows exactly who he wants to sell. And he knows exactly who have been down tools 
uh, who have been playing very poorly for any season and players are But if you sack Ten Hag now, it's basically second chance for everybody. For players like Sancho, players like Donny van de Beek and the rest. If that goes, these players are going to stay and a new manager is going to come in and try to assess all of them, basically give all of them a second chance. But yes, we know that Sancho, Donny van de Beek, Maguire, McTominay, these players in the long term, in the long run, are not really um, fit for the club and probably um, needs to leave. But that's the problem we have to face. And also, sucking the hag means we, mean we have to pay the hag ten million pounds to pay him off. And then, if you pay the hag ten million pounds to pay him off, you you have to sign a new manager. You have to um, keep this all these players. So it means there's, there's basically not going to be any form of rebuild um, if the hag goes because. It doesn't really make sense. A, a, a new manager would not want to sell a lot of players. That's facts. A new manager would not want to sell a lot of players. So it means our, our rebuild will be on pause. But you and me right here knows like a hundred, like we have a long list of players want to sell. Many fans even want to sell Rashford. Many fans are tired of Anthony. Many fans want um, Casemiro, wants Varane, wants um, many of these players to go. But under, new man, under, under a new manager, many of these players we remain here. And mind you, under a new manager, you might be surprised that a new manager might not like your favorite player. If Garnacho is your favorite player, if um, Rashford is your favorite player, I don't really care who is your favorite player. If Holland is your favorite player, a new manager might come in and say, Holland is not going to be my first choice um, striker. Garnacho is not fit to play my team. I'm going to, you know, buy a new winger that, that can play better than Garnacho because I don't really like Garnacho. Maybe Garnacho doesn't, doesn't fit my style. So a new manager might come in and really change lots of things a new manager might come in and hinder the progress of minor. Minor really want to play minor regularly and, you know, keep, I start keeping him on the bench and that's how his career as United begins to, begins to stall. A new manager might also come in and be like, the quality of our youth system is not really that good and I'm going to, you know, pick, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to like, um, integrate too many of them because I don't, I don't think they're that good. Meanwhile, we have Ten Hag, um, uh, we have Ten Hag promoting lots of academy players into the first team, which is very, very good to see. Over the years, they have really revamped our academy system. Every player now knows that to, you can, you can, you have a chance at playing for the first team if you show the levels, um, uh, defeating the standard of the first team according to Eric Ten Hag. And you have seen, seen him promoting lots of academy players and you can see them doing very well. You can see that even players that we expected to, to be given a chance are gone. Fagundo Pelesi went alone, Avril Fernandez went alone, but at the end of the day, doing their, doing their loan spells right now, they're not really doing anything special. So, they had, at, at the end of the day, was right. Um, Zidane Agbal has been on loan, but I've not had, I, I, Zidane Agbal was sold, but I haven't really had him doing wow, um, on loan. Charlie, Charlie Savage was sold also, we haven't had him doing wow, um, in his new club. So, at the end of the day, they had really promoted the players, um, into the first team, I have seen them play very, very, very well. So, Saki Ten Hag right now is really, really going to hinder the, the first two years or the last two years um, under him, which has been really, really good as a whole. But down to the first team, what he needs in the first team is backing to sell lots of these players and also the backing to bring in more qualified players. I understand that the new system under the Ineos group is going to be like, is Ten Hag is not going to have all the power in terms of signings. That is fine. That is good. Under um, under I, I, under Ajax, when he was at, at Ajax, Ten Hag was working under a group too. Um, he didn't have the final say. He was working with the director of football, the technical director, and the rest. So if we are, as, as we're having that at United now, it doesn't really matter. He's going to come in and still be part of that team. So if we sack Ten Hag at the end of the day, it's going to hinder lots of things. We're going to see many of these players here again. Mario came out yesterday to say that many players, some players who played under him, who he thought were, were not fit to be, to play for a club like Manchester United, they are still here. So what, what, what does that say about our transfer policy? What does that say about the mentality of this club? We need to clear house. We have been clearing house at the background. Now we need to clear house in the first team. Many of these players have to go. We need to see at least 10 players and bring in like six to seven new players that fit the system, that have that high mentality, that when they are 3-0 up, keep the win going, not drop their heads and concede 3-3. Very, very embarrassing yesterday to watch. But like I said, fine and good. Ten Hag has to take some blame 
but Ten Hag isn't just the only problem at the club. And I don't. I, and at the end of the day, if you look at other clubs that got in new manager and they are playing so well after two to three years, what happened was lots of players left and new players came in. During the first two years on that club, Ateta, it wasn't wow. Club finished eighth twice. Meanwhile, they had, they had, I've had the best win ratio of any Manchester United manager. He has gave us the first cup in the last five years when he, faced, when he first came in. Took us to the FA Cup final, which he lost. He gave us Champions League um, football in his first season. Now in his second season, we are seeing, the, we are seeing so many injuries which we can attribute to why we have been poor. We got, we, during the, during the, during the last summer transfer window, we didn't, we didn't, we were, we were not able to sell lots of players. We, not, we, we didn't even clear house. I think Fred was the only player we sold. We didn't, we were not able to sell lots of players. We sell that same player that he had in his first, in his first year. Into his second year, finally we signed, we signed new players, but the core of the squad wasn't really changed. And in the second season, too many injuries. Um, the transfer window was very poor in terms of selling players. And, um, you can see that the, these are some of the reasons why probably haven't performed really well this season. But if in his third season, you can, okay, even, even with the fact that we have been so shit this season, find our Champions League, we have Champions League, um, um, uh, football was absolutely poor. It was dreadful. Um, we finished last in the group, very disgusting. Um, Premier League, we have been so bad. But still yet, we, he's taken up to another cup final. Which is not too bad, because if you look at how poor the season was, right? It's not too bad. Um, if we get, if we win the cup, it doesn't make the season good, but the season is still poor. But at least we can compensate ourselves with that. And then coming to the, his third season at the club, if you are able to give him new players, sell out some players, and bring in fresh mentality into the squad, I don't see any reason why we can't go from first season being so high, second season being so low, and third season being high up again. Which with the right decisions made in the, um, in the summer transfer window, next season could be good under Ten Hag. But if you start Ten Hag, it's going to be like starting everything all over again. And I don't think that's the best thing for us to do right now. It's, I'm so, it's so tired, so tiring. Sack manager, sack manager after two years, sack him. After two years, sack him. We need stability. Stick with Ten Hag. Sacking Ten Hag is the easy decision. Keeping Ten Hag is the hard decision. I want us to take the hard decision and stick by him. Give him the right tools and see how he performs in his first season. If he performs very bad in his first season, feel free to sack him. Why not? Sack him.